Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to change your rear drum brakes on a Ford F-150. Stay tuned. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, race the rear, put it on jack stands, and then take off both of the wheels. Once you take your wheels off and you put the car on jack stands, or the truck in this case, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna show you guys one side. Uh, you know, it's gonna be the same on the other side, obviously, you repeat the process. But uh, before you get started, if you are getting new drums, make sure they do match. Um, and then your shoes, I mean obviously you won't really see them until you take those off, but make sure everything looks good. Um, I did get a hardware kit for this. Uh, this is just a basic hardware kit that has the springs, uh, hold down springs. So you can get like a master spring kit that has the self adjusters and all that in there. Um, if you notice that there's noise or anything like that, then you might want to get all that so that way you make sure there's nothing missing. <clears throat> um, on this one here, it's, I mean, the vehicle I think has about 250,000 miles, so it's never had the drum brakes replaced. So um, I just got new drums because I figured by this time, might as well put new ones. Um, but anyways, uh, we're gonna start by taking this off. Hopefully it's not two seats there in the hub um, and then replacing the, the drums. To get started, uh, these are pretty seats in there, so I, you know, I hit it around the area here to kind of break them apart. Uh, get a pry bar or a screwdriver and wedge it in between here and kind of pry it out. You know, you're gonna tell it's like prime, and then just hit it on the outside like. That. Um, normally, that'll kind of break it loose, pop it back, so you can slide it out. Um, Normally, if it's really, really ceased in there, it's going to take more than that. But um, you can see all that brake dust in there. So that's quite a bit of dust. Um, actually, these don't look that bad at all, quite honestly. Um, they don't have a lip. Even the shoes, you know, don't... They're not too worn out. So this isn't that bad. Um, Quite honestly, I could probably get away with just putting this drum spec in there, but I already have the new one. So um, normally when they're really worn out, you'll have a lip right here on the edge. I mean, it has a slight lip, but not much. And then your shoes are gonna be pretty worn out. And I mean, you can see these compared to the new ones. Um, you know, maybe, let's open them up here. So normally there's gonna be a leading shoe and a trailing shoe, just keep that in mind on these. Um, let's see. So for example, like this one has this pin down here which matches with that down there. Um, just gotta make sure to put them in the right spot. But, you know, it's, it's I guess they're about almost halfway worn out. Um, they're not horrible, but they are worn out. So, uh, the back one though, it's not as worn out. Normally the, the leading shoe does a lot more of the stopping than the, the chilling shoe, but. Anyways, we'll go ahead and keep going here. Now with these, it's, uh, they do have like the, it's like a little special tool that kind of, you can use to unhook the springs and things like that. Um, normally I use 
you know, some vice grips to get a hold of the spring and pull it out. So if you do have the special tool or you can go buy it, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll make it a little bit easier, I guess. If not, I just make sure I hold on to the spring really good here on the, on the side, and then I'm gonna pull it around this pin. And this is the top spring, so I know that one obviously has to come out first. Uh, and that goes right in here where the adjuster is. I guess I should take this bottom one first. Let's see here. Self-adjuster, so the self-adjuster is um, in that little pin that I showed you earlier. And so you pretty much just move this little part here and then hook it. Like this. And this spring here was just kind of placed in there um, pretty much to keep it pushed down like this. Now if anything you forget, do one side at a time, you can go to the other side and you know check where everything is. So, um, But I like to kind of keep it here on the, on the floor the same way that it was, so I know which way it's going to come apart. So once this little self-adjuster thing is out of the way here, I can remove this spring, put it over here, and then I have to get rid of this other spring here so this is going to be a little bit I have this needle noise by scripts There's just not a lot of room to pull it here, so I have to make sure I grab it back enough so I can pull it back. And so use a little bit of leverage, you know, to pull it around. Make sure you don't put your fingers where that spring, if it gets loose, it's going to catch them. Uh, and then unhook it, so I know this goes up here. And then I can remove this little piece here that goes to that self-adjuster, okay? Um, there's usually this little piece of metal up here that holds the shoe back. And then at this point, there's going to be the spring right here on the bottom that you also have to remove. Now this one has like a longer rod, so it's easier to grab it. And take it out. Now pretty much at this point, you know, your shoes can come off. I'm going to remove this self-adjuster here. You know, this one normally has to be kind of loose to adjust. This one was kind of stuck. I have to clean that up. This little piece here just kind of pops out. And so at this point, your shoes are pretty much loose. Um, so there's this little pins here that are going to hold them in place and then the shoe has the uh, lever for the uh, handbrake as well. Um, at this point we can remove this equalizer bar as well and it has this spring here. And then I'm going to grab some pliers and push and turn on this hold down spring. And then with the you know with the other hand push on this nail looking thing so it doesn't push back that way you can take it out. Um, same thing on this one. This one's probably just gonna come right off as soon as I do this. So okay. 
Now this one's going to be held on to the parking brake right here. So let's just make sure that we, uh, we're we going to pull on the cable a little bit. And actually, you don't really have to take this off here at the bottom. On this one, you can take it off from up here on this little, this little clip that holds it in. This little clip is kind of like a horseshoe looking clip and uh, when you put a new one in and there's like a little washer in there but when you put a new one in uh, you know you slide it in and then you have to squeeze it so it doesn't come back out and there's this little washer that's kind of spring loaded so it keeps tension on it so um, the one thing you know you can see these shoes are really crystallized uh, you know this just over time they do have some cracking on them things like that but overall not too bad really um, I was expecting them to be more worn out than that um, at this point I'm gonna get some brake cleaner and just you know clean off um, the drum backing plate here so we can start putting the new pieces back on there um, just spray it really good get a brush if you need to and clean it up cleaned uh, the backing plate really good. Um, I did use some oil eater and my little brush to loosen all the kind of you know stuck on grease. Um, you can use spray cleaner but you're gonna use probably a few cans if it's kind of caked on so I, I used some oil eater, cleaned it and then you know what or spray it off with with brake cleaner afterwards. So, um, so I'm good to start putting it back together. I did uh, unthread the adjuster all the way out and put some uh, brake grease here on the threads. That way it's, you know, it's not seized or anything like that. And I put it all the way back in because with the new shoes being bigger, um, more than likely this has to be all the way in, but we can always adjust it. And then I also took this back part out and put some grease in there. Uh, you know, when I first took it apart, this was kind of stuck in there. so. Um, got that in there already. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the rest. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this shoe. So it's the one that had the little pin here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna get this uh, parking brake lever put on there. Now I have my hardware kit. And in this hardware kit, it does come with that new small washer that goes in there. And that washer is spring loaded, and then it has this little clip that I have to put in there. So, um, this is gonna take a little bit of effort because you have to kind of push it in as you put that clip in because that um, the washer is spring loaded. So, keep that in mind, it's gonna be little tight to get it in there. If you have an extra pair of hands, someone can kind of help you maybe, then that would probably make it a little bit easier. But if not, just kind of put it in there. It's probably going to pop out a few times before you can get it in. But 
can kind of push it in there a little bit like I did just now and then get your pliers and push it all the way. Once it's in all the way, make sure that you squeeze those ends. Uh, just that way it kind of locks it in place. It's not gonna pop out. So. All right. So we have this in here. Um, I am going to guide this little pins that stick out of your uh, wheel cylinder. You have to guide them in this little, in the little piece on the drum. So they are guided right in here. Make sure you push those in there. Okay, this is pretty much good to go here. And then I'm going to grab my new nail kind of thing make sure they're the same length as the old ones sometimes on your hardware kit um, you're gonna have two different sizes uh, because the hardware kit can be for a couple of different vehicles so keep that in mind and I'm gonna grab my spring Now a couple different things here um, on this hold down spring. If you see the factory ones, they're actually, um, this top part is held on to the, to the little cap. So it makes it easier to put it on. Um, I think I'm just gonna reuse these. I mean, these are still good. I'm gonna go with my pliers. Make sure that the hole lines up. And then what I do when I push it, I push it in and then instead of trying to turn the pliers, I would, you know, since I'm holding on to that nail on the back, I turn the nail. Makes it easier than trying to turn the spring with your pliers. So, all right, put this in here. Um, the other thing, uh, you know, you wanna make sure that you Loop here on the backing plate where your shoe is going to rub and you can tell the areas that are kind of worn out. Now if you put your shoe on already, let me just show you I did this one so I can show you. You can still pull the shoe forward a little bit. And then get with your brush right behind there. that you put some lube in there. All right. So that one is on there. I'm gonna go ahead and get my other shoe. This is gonna go on this side. the spring same thing push it in and then turn it with my finger on the back side and that way it's in there so um, at this point everything is kind of well not everything but your shoes are kind of set in there um, don't forget your stabilizer bar here that one has to be put on there I'm gonna slide this spring out a little bit here Um, and also this spring here was twisted and pushed all the way down. So I know it wasn't 
helping push this, uh, the shoes back out. So a couple of things that you know can make your, your drum brakes kind of not operate as efficient as they should. Like I said, I mean, this truck just has a lot of miles, but... Uh, let's say you buy like a Fox Body Mustang, those have drum brakes on the rear, so you know, this is something that you're going to have to do. Uh, you know, you buy an older F-150, same thing. Um, unless you want to buy like a conversion kit or something like that, but... Um, if you just want to kind of fix it back to factory stock, then this is what you would do. Now here on my hardware kit, it's the new spring. And so it has that. Um, this part goes where the parking brake is. And then this one has this little metal piece that this little tabs go into this other side of the shoe. So make sure you put it back in the right spot. And make sure you do this before you put any of the springs, uh, just because it will make it a lot easier to get all this in there without the springs pushing back on it. So. All right. So now that we have that in there, I'm going to go ahead and throw the adjuster here on the bottom. So this one just pretty much sits in here for now. Same thing with you know, without all your springs, this makes it easier to just kind of put in here. And just try to keep everything, um, without the springs also, everything's going to try to kind of push out and things like that. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. I'm going to grab my new spring that matches the bottom one here. And I'm going to put it right in there. Now, if you do forget where each of the springs go, just remember, do one side at a time. Don't take the other side apart. You can take the, the tire off, um, but just don't. But as you start putting the springs on there, everything's gonna, you know, kind of start pushing it together. So um, I'm also gonna put a little bit of the loop here on top. Pretty much anywhere that metal to metal is gonna be kind of moving um, helps with the squeaking. And then all these small parts, as I'm putting them back, I'm going to be just kind of brushing them off a little bit. Make sure they're clean. Now that one in there like that. Um, this little metal, little metal clip went in here. Okay, put that back in there. And then this little, uh, wire with the spring went in here as well. Now 
All right. So the next one is going to be this bigger spring. This one right here. Um, so this is where it's going to be a little bit, uh, you know, trickier just to pull this spring out. So like I said, they have a, a special tool that has like a hook and you can kind of pull it on. Um, you can use a screwdriver. Again, just be careful when you're pulling it, you know, uh, make sure your fingers aren't on the way. Um, you don't want it to like catch your finger because these springs are pretty strong. So they will, you know, they will cut your finger if you, let's say you got your finger here and you're pulling, it's, it's gonna get you pretty good, so. Um, I just like to use the the vice grips here. And then since this one came in first, I'm going to make sure that I push it in a little bit. Okay. Because it has to have enough room for the other spring to go back in there. Uh, at this point, just make sure everything is lining up. Um, like the pin here for the wheel sounder, it came out of the, the little notch. So I just make sure that it's back in there. This ones are all good on this side. Um, now I'm gonna grab my other spring for my hardware kit here. And then this one goes where this little clip went in on that hole. And then that goes up there. So uh, same thing with this one, you can get that special tool, use a screwdriver, just be very careful, or use your uh, vice grip. So again, I'm not gonna put like my hands here because if it lets go, it's gonna poke a hole in my finger. But I'm gonna go on this other side and then just pull it. So pretty much just keep your hands away for, from where the spring can, you know, get loose and snap back. But um, at this point, I got all my springs in here on top. I'm just gonna move this little piece up here. Everything's pretty much gonna be tight now. Um, you know, with all the springs and everything. Good to go. And the last thing is gonna be this little uh, piece here that's gonna um, pretty much for the self adjuster here. Well, same thing with this one. If it's hard to get it with your hands, sometimes you can use your needle nose pliers to help you guide it in there. Sometimes it's harder for everything to go back in because um, I mean, obviously you have only spring, so everything is tighter than before. Um, good example here, I'm gonna remove this real quick. And I'll show you guys why. Um, so when I put this clip on this side, um, I can see that it's hitting the back side, so I have to do it on the inside which is on this side here. 
And so just, you know, you're just going to look at everything, how it goes back in. If it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. Um, or like I said before, make sure that you look at the other side. And that way you know exactly, okay, this is what I need to change. But... Makes it easier if you don't take both sides apart. All right, perfect. So at this point, we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna just kind of put a little bit of brake cleaner around. Make sure everything looks good, nice and tight. And use a clean rag if you need to wipe any of your shoes here. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the new drum in. On the new drum, make sure that you do clean the inside. So let me grab some brake cleaner. I guess I already had brake cleaner, but let me grab a paper towel here. and just clean the surface. So, you know, most manufacturers put some sort of coating on there so they don't rust. Make sure you take all that out. And then at this point, you know, this is where you can see, okay, this is pretty loose. Uh, so then we can adjust our adjuster here. And I like to pull on the little clip and then turn it. You can turn it by hand. Uh, technically, I guess you can go from the back side and do it that way. We're right in here, so why not? Drum brakes do self-adjust, but you don't want to leave them all the way down because um, then your pedals <laughs> it's gonna be super loose. So. so I think this is pretty good. Now it's got a good feel to it. Um, Again, once you drive a little bit, it will adjust, but you want to make sure that it's somewhat close to where you want to be. Um, at this point, you're done. You can do the other side. Uh, same thing. Just, you know, take everything off. You can wait to put the tire just in case you need to reference back to where all the springs were. But uh, make sure that you don't just uh, take all the both sides off uh, because then it's going to be kind of hard to know what went what. So. Um, and then just make sure you drive it. Uh, the other thing I, I'm going to mention is while you do one side, you can always crack open the bleeder screw if you want to flush out your brake system. Uh, like what I'm going to do now is crack it open, let it kind of, you know, some of the fluid go through while I do the other side. Um, I'll keep an eye on the reservoir, make sure it doesn't go dry. And that way, by the time I do that one, I can have the liquid pretty much new all the way back here and then I'll just do the other side a little bit and I'll be good to go um, so that's one thing if you have a helper you can have them push the brake and, and do it that way um, either way would work but anyways uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did like it uh, 
hit the thumbs up, leave any comments, questions below, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.